hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going behind the scenes. Well, I get a lot of comments on this show and quite often people are saying how much work it must be to produce two shows a week. That's 104 shows a year and I have to tell you it is very time consuming. So I thought on this week's show, I would give you guys a little bit of a glimpse as to kind of a behind the scenes and show you what it takes to produce my show. Now every show, no matter how big or how small, has to start somewhere and it usually starts with an idea. Now those ideas have to come from somewhere and they don't all come from up in here. Um, I have a load of different resources that I use to get show ideas. Um, magazines, I have books. Sometimes my wife will send me a picture of something she saw online. Sometimes one project spawns another, as is in the case of I made a cigar box ukulele. Well, of course, I needed a case for that, so hence the next show comes along. Sometimes it's viewer suggestions somebody wanting to see something or learn how it's done, so I produce a show or start figuring out how to produce a show. Sometimes it's something as simple as walking through an aisle of a store and seeing something and saying, you know what, man, I can make that a lot better than what that thing is. Other times it's out of pure necessity. Hence the case with the helping hands, where I have problems getting things from behind tools, so. I needed something to help me, and the project was born. Sometimes the show idea comes from getting a new tool, and hence on a Tuesday show you might get an installation or a review or that sort of thing. Or sometimes I try a new process, in which case I want to bring it to you. That spawns a show idea. And let's not discount the other YouTubers out there. I am not above looking at another YouTube channel, getting an idea, and wanting to produce that idea on my show for my viewers. I'll give you an example of that. Paul's Messy Workshop, he put out a show on making a simple lidded box. I contacted Paul and said, would you mind if I make this for my show and do kind of my version of it? Not at all, he said, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And that's what the YouTube community is all about. So if I see something on someone else's show, I always shoot them a line and say, hey, do you mind if I duplicate this and do my own version? In most cases, they don't have a problem with it, but if they do, well, then that idea suddenly goes off by the wayside. Now you have to keep the ideas somewhere. And if I, I'm one of these guys, if I don't write it down right away, it's gone. So on my phone, I have this app and it's called Check This. It's a free list app and in that phone I have show idea after show idea after show idea for both the Friday woodworking shows and the Tuesday alternative, alternative shows. And that's where they're stored. They're stored on my phone as well as on my computer. So I have a backup of that. But at least with my phone, whenever I get an idea or an idea strikes me, I can stick it in the phone right away and I know I have that for later. Now, as well as using an application on my phone, I also have a separate folder on my computer. And that folder contains things like photos that my wife would send me of a project idea, or pictures from you viewers of something you'd like to see made, and that sort of thing. There's all kinds of different project ideas in there. Some of them are just a photograph. Some of them are just a few key words to remind me of what it is. And no matter how big or how small, they're all there and they all have a place somewhere that I can access them. Now having project ideas and having access to them is one thing, but it's the smallest part of the entire process. I only work out here on the weekends. The reason for that, especially in the winter, is it's not heated out here. I have to burn uh, a wood burning stove in order to get heat. So. In order to maximize my time, I need to know what I'm doing out here. I'm not going to come out here and waste an entire day's worth of wood to stand there and scratch my head. So I never come out to the shop without knowing what I'm doing. 
So once I have the ideas, I go through those lists and I pick out the ones that I want to do for that week. At that point in time now, the research starts. What materials do I need? What processes do I need? Do I actually know how to do the processes? Because I'm telling you, not everybody knows everything when it comes to woodworking. There are certain things that are new processes to me, and if I don't know them, or I'm not sure, or I haven't done them in a very long time, I need to do research. And sometimes that research is watching my own show, believe it or not. And I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty funny. <laughs> so, it's a great show. So anyway, once we get that process, if there's any materials that I need to pick up, those materials are gathered in the evenings throughout the week, and I make sure that by the time Saturday morning comes, I have everything I need. Now, my shop day usually starts between 9 and 10 a.m., and it usually ends anywhere between 5 and 7 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday. So, I come out here, and that's when the filming day starts. So what kind of equipment do I use here in the shop? So you have your idea and you come out to the shop and it's filming day. Well, the first thing that I need to do is set up my camera. Um, the main reason is here, the camera does not stay in the shop. There's too much temperature fluctuation, so I don't keep the electronics out here. The lights are stationary. Now for me, I use the Sony FDR AX100 camera. That is my main camera. That is the one I'm looking at you with right now. Um, it is a 4K camera and because of that, well, you need some pretty good lights in the shop for that. So I have all around the shop um, four foot fluorescent lights up in the ceiling as well as shop made filming lights that I use that I featured here on the program. So with the Sony uh, camera as my main one, I also have a second camera that I use. And that is this one that I'm looking at you with right now. That one is my GoPro camera. And for that, uh, it has different mounts. I either have a mount on the lathe, I have ceiling mounts that I use, different clips. Uh, it mounts to my helmet, or I have it on a tripod. And that's to get those secondary shots. Sometimes I need a screen in screen, or sometimes if I'm working on a tool, I can't get up underneath with the regular camera to get the shot, and that is the camera that I use. Now the GoPro only has one memory card and the reason for that is because I don't use it as often as the Sony. But with the Sony, I have eight memory cards, all numbered, go figure, one through eight. And they are organized on the shop's whiteboard that we made here on the program uh, with some scrap cherry and some resins. So that's how I keep the shows organized, so I don't accidentally over or record over my footage. They all get recorded on that whiteboard and I always know what card has what show on it. So for the most part, those are the only two things that I use for video recording out here in the shop. Those two cameras are shifted around. I'm a one-man show, and they get shifted and moved around the shop depending on what station I'm working at, what I'm doing, that each one has to be set up for each individual shop. It makes it very, very time-consuming. So you get all your footage for the day, whether it be from the Sony or whether it be from the GoPro. So what do I do with it after I've finished filming for the day? Well, from there, I head into my office in the house and I'll show you what happens with the stuff. With all the footage of the show taken and now on memory cards, I have to bring it in here. And this is where basically the magic of the show happens, where the show is put together, edited, titles are added, that sort of thing. Now, shooting in 4K requires crazy amounts of memory. Um, so because of that, on the main computer over here where all the editing is done, there's like 30 terabytes of memory there, which holds a vast amount of video files for the show. Um, all of the shows are put onto this computer on a schedule, on a spreadsheet, and it carries information such as links that I need to post, 
that sort of thing. It's also a reminder checklist for me to edit the show for starters. And of course, there's the, the title pages and then, you know, did I upload it? When did I upload it? When is it scheduled for? And that sort of thing. But as far as editing goes, I, I used to use iMovie way back on the show. And after a period of time, it didn't really suit my needs. So I ended up changing to basically Final Cut Pro 10, which is uh, basically, it's, it's iMovie on steroids. It's a crazy editing program. Um, and although the price may seem a little high to some, it's also one heck of a great editing software. Um, so all the clips then are now brought into here. And of course I have my MacBook over here, which I use for reference and I cross work between the two. All the files are now uploaded onto external hard drives of my iMac and then they are imported into the editing software. From there, I have to watch each clip individually and pull out bits and pieces that I want to use in the show. And then I can put that in the first draft. I then see how long the show is and I go through that draft and I do a re-edit. And depending on uh, how happy I am with the length and that sort of thing, I can usually play around with it a bit. I try to make the shows between 20 and 25 minutes long, but sometimes with some shows it's just not possible to get that length, so I end up going a little over. But you know what, at least I don't skimp on the information. How long does it take to edit a show? Well, you know what, in all honesty, it can take as little as an hour or I've had it take like seven or eight hours on some shows. The hardest and most time consuming shows to edit are things like the blooper reel or the top 10 lists. There's just so many little quirky things that get put in there like little sound effects and editing out the little bloopers and putting them in the right spot. It's a very time consuming process and it usually takes hours. So that's where the editing comes from. At that point, once the editing of the show is done, I have to sit and I have to watch it. So uh, I spend the 20, 25 minutes watching the show, correcting any errors that I find in that time period, and then I export it. So what happens after we export the show? Well, then, of course, we have to take it to YouTube. And once you get to YouTube, you can go into the add video or create rather and you upload the video and you end up getting a screen that looks a little like this and actually it looks exactly like this but from there you choose your video you do all the editing there on the youtube screen things like search words you have to put in the description any links that you may have you also have to if you're monetized uh, certify it that there's nothing violent in it or no language, that sort of thing, to make it so that it's usable for the advertisers. Um, there's a whole host of things that have to be done as well with, with the show as far as getting it prepared. And I usually do the uploading overnight. Because these files are shot in 4K, the end result is usually a 10 gigabyte or more size file to upload onto YouTube. So it's very time consuming. I don't do it during the day. I do it overnight while I'm sleeping so that I'm not bogging down the household by using up too much bandwidth. So it gets put onto YouTube. I finish all the editing there and that sort of thing. And I schedule it. This, the show is pre-recorded. Um, I used to do it that I would upload the day before and I had to stop. It got crazy. So I started scheduling. So now um, we're actually quite a few months ahead. So if you're seeing a show, today's show, for example, uh, right now it's much earlier. This gets filmed months before. So it's not an instant thing. Um, and it also enables me by doing that, that if I have a product or a process and you guys ask questions about it, usually by the time the show airs, I've had a chance say, to work with the tool and I know a little more about it and how it performs and I'm better equipped to answer your, your questions. So that's why it gets pre-recorded. 
Either way, it gets uploaded, but that is not the end of it. Once it's uploaded and scheduled, it doesn't end there. And the reason it doesn't end there is basically because of the comments. I spend a lot of time answering comments on the show, and I do my best to answer everybody's comment. I, I honestly try to answer every comment that is placed on one of my shows. Um, it's time consuming. It is very time consuming. But I do my best with it, and uh, every night when I come home from my regular job, my uh, nine to five sort of thing, I sit down here at the computers and I answer all of your questions or comments that you've made on my various shows. So all in all, it's not a very quick process. And there you have it, a behind the scenes look at a Cut Above Woodworking's YouTube channel. Guys, I put a lot of effort into this show and I put a lot of time into it. And honestly, it's a labor of love. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. I have a lot of people ask me, is this my job? Is this my career? Am I a full-time YouTuber? No, no, I'm an electrician. I work 40 hours a week at my job. Um, I go in Monday to Friday. I work just like everybody else. I put in my full days. I collect my paycheck. I pay my mortgage. I pay my bills. And on the weekends, I come out here and I get to play doing what I love to do. Um, how much time do I invest per week in the show? If you want to count um, answering questions and comments because honestly I do my best to answer every single comment that's placed on every single episode of my show. Uh, if you want to count the answering the comments and the editing and the filming and um, the research and the organizing and the uploading and etc etc etc. I spend between 30 and 40 hours a week on top of my full-time career job to work here on the show. And that is not a complaint. It is 30 or 40 hours well spent. I really do love what I do here on my channel. And I really do love my interactions with all of you guys. Um, so 30, 40, 30 to 40 hours is time well spent. I have an opportunity here by working on my channel. Um, I, I, I honestly have a great opportunity to interact with all of you. I have met so many great people and I have had so many great experiences by doing this show, but it didn't come easy. I didn't do it by putting in half an hour a week and calling it a YouTube channel. It is a very time consuming process and I put everything I've got into it. And although people say I talk too much, you know what? said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's my show. <laughs> hey guys, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I thought it would be a great show idea to bring this to you and to possibly give you some kind of insight of what it takes for me to run this channel. It is time consuming, labor intensive. It is thought invoking because these ideas have to come from somewhere and it's not just having the idea but a lot of times I sit there wondering how to actually accomplish it. How can I take this idea, film it and transpose it into a show that's going to cram in 20 to 25 minutes, give as much information as I possibly can and have it so that you guys are going to enjoy it. That is honestly, it is a very difficult thing to do but I do enjoy doing it and hopefully I'm exceeding or hopefully I'm succeeding in bringing you something that you're enjoying. If you haven't already guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. It's honestly been a load of fun. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to stop by the channel today and check out today's episode. And honestly, guys, I truly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.